Bob William Frawley. Very tasty soup, huh? The uh, nice thing about thin soup like this is it's not too filling. I mean, uh, it sort of whets your appetite for the rest of the dinner. <laughs> what rest Shh. of the... What's that? Okay, that does it. I'll get to your homework. Never mind the dishes. I'll take care of them. What do you mean that does it? Is this all we're getting for dinner? Are, are, are we on some kind of a diet or something? No, that's just Bub's corny way of telling us we're out of food. Out of food? Yeah, Bub's all shook up. Gee, you're darn right I'm all shook up. Look, Dad, I don't I've mind doing the cooking, to scrubbing, and I have a few sewing, obligations and the housework around here. I mean, I can't but when it comes to running the errands and buying the groceries, by George, I think I mean, it's only it's fair that fair, I have a little Dad. help. I, I, Let's now, just a minute, just a minute. Mike promised Bob to pick him up after school, and Look here, I young did man, not we promise. Here, young man, we were here to ask you I would, but I You've certainly already didn't done promise. Why don't you butt out anyway? All right, let's not argue. It's not good on an empty stomach. My promise. <laughs> now, it seems fantastic, but I gather we're out of food. And all because Mike, for apparently good reasons, has upset Bub. And uh, justifiably so by not taking him shopping. Correct? The day, yesterday, and the day before that. Well, it's not my fault, Dad. So darn many unexpected things came up at school. Unexpected is right. Rally day, post-rally day, pre-rally day. I've had my fill of senior activities. I'm fed up. I wish I were. Well, it seems we do have a little problem. Mike has some obligations to meet, and Bub has a few things to pick up downtown. A few things? Laundry, cleaning, groceries. And I was supposed to pick up the lawnmower about a week ago. How am I going to get all those things in that sawed-off little jalopy of his? It's not sawed off, it's cut down. Well, sawed off or cut down, I'm sure it'll hold all the things you have to pick up, Bob. It has that big trunk in the back. Are you kidding? That trunk's been rusted shut for years. It isn't rusted, it's locked. Well, Mike, unlock it. Well, I, I lost the key. I'm getting hungrier every minute. <laughs> See? Well, all we have to do is make a slight adjustment. We yeah? Don't ask me to adjust. I've adjusted myself right out of food. Now, Bob, don't be inflexible. Healthy living is simply an endless, endless series, series of small adjustments. <laughs> That's right. Fooey! Yeah. Just a minute. I'm starving. Starving to death. All right, here's the solution. Mike, tomorrow you drive the station wagon to school and arrange your schedule so that you can take your granddad shopping in the afternoon, okay? Okay. Dad? Are you going to take the bus? No, no, I'm not proud. I'll drive your car. Now, what do you say we all adjust ourselves to a big hamburger down at Freddy's drive? Yeah, hoy! Dad! Oh, I'm sorry, Chip. What is it? I forget. Mother, come on, get your food. Whoa! 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 Now, personally, Douglas, I'm convinced that you're the right man. You're a clear thinker, sharp eye for detail, and not likely to get bogged down by government red tape. Thank you, sir. Couldn't have gotten in without him, could I? <laughs> Here it is. Good. Figures you were the right man. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we take your car? Oh, certainly, General. Oh, I, uh, 
I forgot. We've had a little transportation mix up at the house, and I'm driving my son's car. I don't think we. Are can... you apologizing, Douglas? Well, no, sir. It isn't that. It's just. Well, adjust to it. Can't be inflexible, you know. I know, sir. Life, Life is, is just, just a, a series, series of <laughs> small adjustments. <laughs> Come on, Johnson. No time for that. May I have your identification, please? <laughs> Douglas. Ah, look out! <laughs> Sorry, General, I didn't know that. Uh, come on, Johnson, let's get out. Well, see you at your house for dinner tonight. Fine, General, about 6.30 sharp. Uh, good. I'm looking forward to a good home-cooked dinner for yeah. a change. Here, can I help you? Come on, Johnson. I guess I can. <laughs> Maybe you'd better get out this side. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At this rate, we may have to have dinner in the car. Yes. Uh, hold it. Lean forward, Johnson. Oh, that's clear thinking, General. Yeah. It certainly makes it more comfortable, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Thanks for the ride. Perfectly welcome, sir. See you at 6, sir. All right. We'll uh, be ready and waiting, General. You sure I can't pick you up someplace? No, thanks. I'll take a cab. <laughs> Douglas used to be a fine pilot. Funny. Some men just never adjust to civilian life. <laughs> Come on, Johnson.
want you to meet him at the McKinley bus stop at 6 o'clock. Bus stop? What did you do to my car? Robbie, turn that thing off. Well, uh, there's some kind of an adjustment to be made. He'll explain it to you when you pick him up. Robbie! That's tough to take. Huh? I said that's tough to take. Why? He's ridden in a bus before. No, I mean about my car. I'll shut off your gas if you don't get in my house. There's a two-star general coming to dinner tonight. Get in there. Wow, why didn't you say so? Well, I was just too shy to mention it. Now get in there. Will you dry up? <laughs> Garfield. Garfield next. Accidents and murders and platinum-haired hotsy-totsies. I beg your pardon? Same thing every day. Oh, yeah. Haven't read a newspaper in 10 years. How'd the Yankees make out? Oh, they won three to two. What's the news about that? To call themselves newspapers. I like history myself. How about you? Yeah, your history's fine. History is like life. I always thought I'd write a history in my life someday. That'd make real interesting reading for people, wouldn't it? Well, I guess that'd depend on what kind of life you had. I'm glad you asked me that. We was all born in a town upstate called Rockfield. <laughs> there were me and my four brothers and five sisters. Things happen sometimes once in a while. Think that'd make an interesting beginning to the story? <laughs> that'd be fine. Just to give you an idea what it was like when the chores was done, we weren't too tuckered out. Why, we'd all of us... Well, no, not all of us, because... <laughs> Wasn't that something? Freckles to match. Never seen so many freckles on one kid in my whole life. Cleveland. Cleveland next. More freckles than a dog has fleas. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was Eulalia's boy. You remember me telling you about Eulalia? Oh, no, yeah. yeah. She was uh, Uncle Rice's niece. Oh. Okay. <laughs> never said that. You played the ukulele. Banjo. The banjo. Right here, freckle faced and a temper to match. Sorner, no use dickering with him. What do you think of that? Never forget the day when we was down chopping weeds over by where the dead cottonwoods used to be. Uh, McKinley. McKinley next. I took that old saw blade and fastened it onto that old hoe handle with a piece of rusty baling wire. <laughs> Our pruning time was just about as handy as a pocket on a shirt. Taft Street. Of course, probably my book wouldn't sell so good. It ain't gonna be filled with all kinds of murder and women screaming and science friction and all. Oh, here's my stop. Well, enjoy talking to you. Mm. <laughs> That's another thing that's wrong with newspapers nowadays. People don't take the time to talk to one another. The bus went right by and didn't even stop. What do you think happened, Bub? I don't know, but your dad will probably be on the next one. He better be anyway, because the general's due here pretty soon. Well, maybe he decided to take a cab. Well, do you think I ought to come home? No, nope, stay where you are. He'll be along pretty quick. Harding. Harding? What happened to McKinley? He was assassinated. I mean the street. Uh, oh, we passed that about 10 minutes ago. I should have slept through my stop. <laughs> Let me off. Hoover. Hoover next. Uh, hey, 
thing. What the heck? Yeah? Well, I, I wonder if I could use your phone. I've had a little oh, phone. Oh, come in. Oh, come in, my, uh, my mentor. Come in, sir. Come in, come in. 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 Come What, what is the address? 4201 Hoover. 4201 Hoover. Yeah, it's a White House and it's right on the corner. Hedwig, Hedwig, my old daughter. Beautiful girl, yeah? Yes, very pretty. Only yeah. 35. Bob, uh, I'll be waiting outside. Hedwig is not married also. The bro, Hedwig oh, oh. makes it herself. Thank you very much. Bob, are you still there? Yeah. What's going on? Sounds like you're having a party. Robbie, you big bag of wind. I'll try you once more in a few minutes, and then I'm going home. And, Bob, if uh, General Heffler gets there before I do, for Pete's sake, be careful what you say to him, will you? He's strong. No, no. Good cook, too. No, no, I didn't mean Makes that. Makes all I, her own clothes. No, I just want you to remember that contract he has in his pockets is our food for the next three months. Yeah. Okay, goodbye. Fine, young girl. Sings, plays the tuba. Well, not at the same time, I bet. <laughs> you like bowling? Oh, yes, yes, I, uh, I like to bowl. Yeah, Hedwig, yeah. bowl 180. 180 and that's she loves girl. children, too. I'll bet she does. Maybe next time you and Hedwig go bowling, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm sure she'll make somebody a wonderful wife. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, don't you like it? Oh, I'm sure it's very good, but I, I, I'm in a hurry. Thanks for uh, this. She has good sense of humor. I can see that. In her very own checking account, too. <laughs> Boy, this just isn't my day. General Heffler's probably ringing the doorbell right now, and here I stand. Of course, I know Bob and the boys will treat him as a general should be treated. I hope. I'll get it! Hey, Bob, there's a big clunky guy here to see Dad. <laughs> my name is Heffler, Major General of the United States Air Force. Oh, yeah. Come on in, Sarge. General. You gonna give my dad that important contract, mister? General! Steve just called. Sounded like he was at a party on the other side of town, Sarge. I am not a sergeant and I am not a mister. I am an important general who is not going to give your father an important contract! 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 Are you getting on or aren't you? Oh, I'm sorry you stopped. I... I'm just waiting for my boy who's going to pick me up. Well, something else has gone wrong. Okay. But if he's like my kid brother, you may be standing there all night. Hey. You, uh, you talked me into it. Huh. Boy, the characters you meet driving a bus. You know, I could write a book about it. It'd be darned interesting, too. Why, just the other day, this long got on my bus... <laughs> Funny. I'm sure Bub said he'd be standing right on the corner. Not there. Well, listen, Mike, I just talked to him. Are you sure you're at 42nd and Hoover? Sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Swenson said Dad just left here. Who? Swenson, I'm calling from his house. Maybe you're hungry, yeah? 
Oh, well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, Bob, what do I do now? Uh, tear, tear, bring the tray for this nice, good-looking young man. <laughs> Beautiful girl, yeah? My youngest. <laughs> How do you do? Bob, are you there? Very fine, and she'll be so good. Tear makes it herself. Thanks. And such a good cook, that girl, at her age, too. <laughs> you like her, yeah? Bob? <laughs> Bob? Hello, Mike. I'm sorry, but my butterfly rolls were burning. Yes. Jeepers, yeah. Bob. When's that general getting here? Between this darn tie and the hunger pains, I'm about gone. Serves you right. Mike, you stay right where you are, and I'll call you back. Okay, Bob. You like to dance? It's harmony six, five, four, three, three seven. seven. Tear, come show this nice, good-looking young man the polka. And make it quick, will you, Bob? Yes, sir. I'll get right on it. Goodbye. Oh, gosh, the general. You stay here. I got a job for you. Chip the door. Bob, can I eat first? No. Chip, get the door. I'm coming. Now you hightail it down to the McKinley Street bus stop. Hey, Bob, there's a big guy here in a clunky uniform to see Dad. <laughs> You saw something, Dad? No, no, no. Just thinking. Well, I sure am. Come on. I mean, or what? Sore. This darn crossbar sure isn't built for comfort. Oh. <laughs> well, stay with it. You've only got a couple of more blocks. <laughs> hey, Robbie. Read this telegram again, will you? Boy, you should have seen the look on Bob's face when the big guy in the clunky uniform turned out to be a telegram boy. <laughs> Cancel dinner plans. Call back to Washington. We'll tell you about project tomorrow. If your phone is not busy. <laughs> Signed, G.A. Heffler, Major General, United States Air Force. <laughs> well, there I was getting all lathered up over nothing. I uh, wonder what happened to Mike. <laughs> I bet we've got the only house in America where you can wake up in the morning and not possibly imagine what's going to happen to you before you go to bed at night. <laughs> Get out of here, baby. Go, go, go. Oh. 